Lights for gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition, but someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the ice cream on the cake. Love. Anything? I can't stand hovering around the damn phone. You know that girl Sarah's in on it. Did you get hold of the nanny bureau? Hmm. They're checking on her now. And the only other person we can't find is that guy from the plant hire affair. We should start putting pressure on his boss. Like hell. Rumors would start flying around like the flu. Good. Then they might be forced into a move. And we won't be able to get in the door for TV cameras. You want that? Well, what the hell do we do, then? We wait. But if they don't phone soon, Cara will go right off the edge. Thank you so much, Doctor. <sighs> How is she? Oh, she's beside herself, of course. And now she's terribly tranquil with it. Look, I've heard all the arguments, but I still think we should ring the police. No! No, you heard the tape. They might hurt her. No, Miranda's their insurance policy. They have to look after her. Just taking a long time. We should probably give them another 12 hours. If they haven't made contact by 12 then... 12 hours? Cara? Oh, she's full of Valium. Why don't they ring? They will. They want something. Money, probably. I'll have to make contact. If it's just money they want, why have they waited so long? To make us sweat. I've seen no fun. Oh, yes. It's the nanny bureau. Yes, what about her family? Oh, are they? How convenient. Well, thank you very much for trying anyway. Why isn't she here? I need her. We'll find her. Oh, she'd know what to do. I want Olivia. Come on, old girl, breakfast time. This is ridiculous. Oh, but it's really stylish, this leg. It practically constitutes indecent exposure. The proportion is much better. Well, in future, when you want to indulge yourself in major surgery, would you please confine yourself to your own wardrobe? Well, the police <laughs> took my wardrobe. You know that. Anyway, this never did suit you. You cut out one of Magda's dresses and you're still alive? <laughs> Where's Maxine? Oh, how should I know? I've only got half the staff camped at my flat. Dr. Chinnery's lawyers are here. What? The libel suit about the plastic surgery story. Is this for me? Great. Two million dollars. You think Maxine's got that much? I very much doubt it. So be nice to them. That's yeah, my mug. I brought it from home specially. I have a thing about sharing drinking utensils. You must have a real problem in restaurants, then. When do you think they'll let me see him? You're going to Mount Eaton and address that short? They'll never let you out. She was supposed to be here at 8.30. She keeps going on and on about Grandma. Well, the place has been a little uncentered since she disappeared. You don't suppose... No. What? That Olivia's got the baby. You're sick. Olivia is a kidnapper. I think your brain's finally gone, Rex. Is it such a crazy idea? Is it? You know she's besotted with the baby. She wouldn't do that to Cara. I keep telling you, she's gone Lola. Don't say that. Well, if she has got the baby, at least she's safe. Oh, that's ridiculous. She hasn't. He's lying. I bet he did it himself. Did what? 
had Miranda kidnapped. What? It's a sort of scummy thing you'd do just to upset everyone. Oh, I'm not listening to this. And to get some ransom money, you'd do anything for money. Including pay a ransom to myself. You're not only vicious, you're stupid as well. He got rid of Grandma by telling lies about Granddad. Well, that's just it, Petal. He wasn't your Granddad. Oh, give it a he rest. He was! He was! Oh, <laughs> he was so, wasn't he? It's, it's all such terribly old and boring history, darling. It didn't worry your father, so I, I shouldn't let it worry you. You knew? Of course I did. And you never told us? What, what, what difference does it make? Mum? It's terrible, and I don't believe it. We had a right to know, don't you think? <coughs> Haven't you got a meeting to go to, Maxine? I... Uh, I most certainly do. Um, we'll talk about this later, all right? <laughs> Darling, I have got a meeting to go to, and I'm late. Now, do you want to lift to the office, or would you rather stay here? I think I should stay with Caro. Well, try not to worry too much. I'd better go in, though. Can I have a lift? You ring me? What for? Because I care, Dumbo. Not a word about this to anyone, you hear? I hear, oh, master. You really do love to stir, don't you? Greatest sport on earth. But look how neatly I rescued you. Mm. Your face is going to be bruised, and you deserve it. You're meeting Chinnery's lawyers. Oh, should I be quaking in my shoes at the outcome? Well, that depends, doesn't it? I'll be with you in a moment. Depends on what? On whether or not we're a partnership. Oh, sober thought has convinced me I'd much rather have you working with me than against me. It's so much less tiring. Then you shouldn't end the day destitute. Speaking of which, Aaron's money. We can't launch ourselves as media magnets without it, you know. I know, and it'll happen. All in good time. You know who stole the baby? No. Do you? I don't think it was Olivia, really. Why not? Oh, not in the middle of a christening. It's too public. I know. <laughs> oh, stay as long as you like, my dear. It's nice to have someone of one's own vintage for a change. But personally, I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Dorothy, how can you say that? I'd die of shame if it ever became known that. Douglas wasn't Brad's father. Then you should have kicked the bucket years ago. Nonsense. Apart from you and Sam, of course. Not a soul ever knew. <laughs> Most people are capable of counting up to nine. Oh, my dear, it was the war. We were lonely. Good men were hard to find. Yours wasn't the only baby that took nearly a year to gestate. You're saying that people knew? It was a nine days wonder. Oh, my God. Oh, nobody cared then. Oh, what should anybody give a damn now? Morning, Gran. Morning, Mrs. Morning, Mrs. Morning, morning, Chris. Morning. <laughs> Jessica, oh, how was Shah this morning? Even more bad tempered than usual. Hmm. I think that leg's still worrying her. Oh, I'll have a look at it. Chris said Cynthia Marshall's coming over later, Gran. So I'm going out? With well, our regular gossip session. Mm. Ooh, I'm sorry, Olivia, old girl. Well, I couldn't put her off. It would only rouse her curiosity. You would apologise, for goodness sake. But I think I will make myself scarce, if you don't mind. She will have heard that I wasn't at the christening, and if she knew I was here, Quite. she might. She has a wonderfully evil tongue. Ah, Cinny. <laughs> But I gave my monthly report to you to type. You did not. It's nowhere on my desk, and I definitely didn't type it. I'd remember. Oh, what have you done with it, then? Well, I think it's insane not to call them. When we want your opinion on that, we'll ask you, Gemma. Maxine, I've been trying to phone Where you. Where did you get that revolting dress? Shouldn't you be... Oh. Good morning, Maxine. <sighs> Can't it wait for five minutes? It's already waited over an hour. The lawyers. Don't worry. They charge for waiting as well. All right. Wheel them in and get me some coffee. Black. Right. You okay to go through now.
What do you think? Back to PR, I fear. Oh, God, they all wear their labels on the outside of their clothes. <laughs> How was the latest Redfern extravaganza? As dramatic as the last one? Why? What happened at the last one? It was a small matter of murder. And the bride ran off into the sunset, if I recall. Oh, that. Well, the baby could hardly run out on her own christening. Could she? I wouldn't put anything past a red fern. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I didn't make the wedding. I thought you'd be in Rio by now. <laughs> yeah. It'll help. We're going to have to make a decision. How long to give them? Well, they could be watching the house. Well, I don't imagine the local constabulary will arrive in a panda car flashing their badges. They said no police. Chelsea, we can't just sit around and wait forever. Well, what do you say to midday? I don't think she'll cope for much longer. I think you're probably right. Stop it! Will you stop it? You're talking about me as if I'm not here. Caro, you can't make rational decisions for yourself when you're zonked on tranquilizers. Oh, God. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. We're all just strung out with all this waiting. You're not to worry, we'll sort it out. Leave me alone! You talk and talk and talk, but you don't do anything. Caro, there's nothing we can do. You can find my baby. I have to have it right away. It's not here because I didn't file it, because I didn't type it, because you never gave it to me. Oh, they wouldn't even let me see him. It was probably that dress. There's something very funny going on here. First they arrest a lovely man like Felix on some trumped-up charges, then they ruin my wedding day, and then they take away all my clothes. Well, don't you think that's odd? Absolutely. Any policeman that confiscates your wardrobe could most definitely be called odd. Oh, those lawyers have been in there far too long for a preliminary meeting. Shelley, have you heard anything? No, but I got the feeling that she was looking forward to it. What the hell is she up to now? Bodes ill. Does it? Do you break down under torture? You all have the papers sent over, then. Thank you. Shelley, would you see these gentlemen out? Well, what's the answer? That depends on the question. How did it go? What happened? What's the outcome? That's three questions. Maxine, we want to know. I will inform my staff about the future of my magazine when I'm good and ready, and not a moment before. Oh, come on. That's hardly fair. We could all be out on our ears. We want to know what's going on. The natives are getting restless out there. Then it's up to you to subdue them. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry. There's so many things going on at the moment of which chinnery is merely an annoyance. All in good time, Magda. I'm famous for my discretion. So am I, dear. Can't you shut her up? She's got tummy ache. She's not used to this formula. Then why didn't you bring the stuff she is used to, for God's sake? Because you said we'd only be away for a couple of hours and then we'd take her back. That's what I was told. It's working. So why the hell haven't our instructions come through? We should cash in on this. A ransom. <laughs> and wake up with our feet set in concrete. It could be worth a lot of money. We're supposed to wait for the call, damn it. There's no point getting upset. It's not going to make things happen any faster. I'm not upset. And you drive me mad when you're prissy. Just shut her up, will you? Or I'll do it. Just think about it, will you? I'm thinking. 
And Anthea's trying to claim that her new diet has ironed out her wrinkles. Well, I know her hairdresser, who for a small bribe admitted there are scars from a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> she was at the Red Fern christening yesterday. Now, that was a fiasco you shouldn't have missed. There must be at least two milliners in Auckland who are certifiable. <laughs> My dear, you have never witnessed anything like the aberrations people were wearing on their heads. Oh, the things you <laughs> see when you haven't got a gun. <laughs> yes, well, I knew there was something going on from the moment I arrived. And I had three different and equally wet excuses from the family. The mother, oh, Caroline, well, she looked as though she'd disappeared into the ether if anyone said boo to her. Oh, the Redfern boys have never had any taste in women. Oh, Sydney, that's twaddle. Is it? Well, what about that redhead of Alistair's who made such an exhibition of herself at the wedding? <laughs> Mind you, one is always guaranteed a circus at a Redfern celebration. And they didn't disappoint. Uh, something happened. Oh, nothing serious, I hope. I did. That is the intriguing part. No one is quite sure. That spoiled little Madam Chelsea suddenly started screaming. And then all the guests were invited to leave with a distinct lack of ceremony. Hello, Mrs. Marshall. <laughs> Darling, I, I thought you were taking the day off. I really should go in for a couple of hours. Oh, don't you look smart. Charming. What a breath of fresh air you must bring to the courtroom. Thank you. I'll see you this afternoon, Gran. Mm -hmm. Darling. So, you don't know. My dear, I haven't the faintest that is driving me insane. It has to be something to do with the Redfern infant. I can't imagine anything else that would activate that plastic dog, Caroline, into hysterics. Here it is, on your desk all the time. What was? Oh, you found it. Good. You all look as if you've got tickets on the Titanic. Oh, all right. It could be worse, a lot worse. An apology, which rather sticks in the craw, but uh, nonetheless. Well, what else? You want more? An apology? Just an apology for a $2 million libel suit? Doesn't make sense. Let me run something past you since you're wearing your canary-swallowing look. Rex dropped us into this libel suit. And it occurs to me, he's the only one that can drop us out again. One would think so, wouldn't one? Sometimes I could strangle you. You're not to believe a word of it. You've listened to Cindy for years. You know the value of her offerings. I also know that the truth is in there somewhere, however garishly decorated. So, Chelsea screamed. Someone was probably ignoring her. Something's happened to Miranda. I just feel it. Thank you. Well, then you have a decision to make, don't you? Whether to stick to your guns and leave the family to sort out their own silly messes, or whether you revert to type. Oh, Gran. No, no, she's right. She's also frank to the point of brutality. Oh, that's what I like about her. I have to find out, at least. So, who will you call? The new man of the Rex, house? Rex, never. And if something has happened, I can hardly ask Caroline. Maxine was always sensible. I wouldn't give her the satisfaction. No. Alistair. Alistair will be discreet. Good heavens, he must have reformed. Hello, Alistair Redfern. Who's this? Alistair. Yes, yes it is, but please, no questions. Just tell me, has something happened? Yes, yes, Alistair, I'm still here. Now listen to me. Nobody is to go to the police. This is a family matter and it must remain so, do you understand? No, no, Alistair, this is my responsibility. And I'll handle it in my own way. Well, where is she? Is she coming home? She just hung up, said no police, she'd handle it. Olivia has ran, but I can't quite see it. Well, did she say where she was? She knows something, as I suggested earlier. Oh, you're sick, you know that? It's going to be all right. Olivia will know what to do. But how do you 
know who's behind the kidnapping. You can't be sure. I can. There are some things one feels instinctively. This is one. Now, be careful, old girl. I'm not afraid. Not for myself. Hello, Mother. I knew you'd come. Is that the Red Ferns? Just listen. If you want the baby back in one piece, you'll do everything exactly the way I tell you. But don't be ridiculous. Where am I supposed to get three million dollars by lunchtime? It's no good saying we have to. We can't. Not a chance. 20,000 tops. All right, 50. Hey, look, don't push your luck, friend. OK, how about this? I'll bring $100,000 as a down payment, but we want some proof that the baby's fine. Yeah, I'll be on my own. I was right, wasn't I? It is you behind this dreadful kidnapping. Come, sit down, make yourself more comfortable. Where is she? What have we done with her? Mother, you've come to visit me for the first time ever. I wanted you to come, and you have. Come on, sit down, please. Not until you tell me the truth. I've missed you. They told me you were coming. I wanted to wear my own clothes. Please, tell me where she is. Why don't you look at me? I look awful, don't I? Miranda. I do. Don't I? No, you look well. I wanted you to come. It's been such a long time, hasn't it? She's fine. She's quite safe. You're certain? Yes. Three million. And a hundred thousand of it by midday. Can you raise that? Me? Well, you made the offer, boss. Well, I didn't have much choice, did I? All you care about is money. Well, you can have mine. All of it. Just get her back. Don't be ridiculous. Yours is in trust. Oh, I can't stand it. I'll give you the money, of course. Nonsense. This is a matter for the whole family. I'm only too pleased to finance it. You don't have to. Hey, I want to. Hi, everyone. Chelsea, we waited for ages. Sorry. Look, let's talk outside, shall we? Not like you to throw away a hundred grand. I have no intention of throwing it away. You're going to be there to catch it. I can't believe isn't an apology. It's a fawning, bootlicking, nausea-inducing betrayal of journalistic pride. Chinnery's lawyers wrote it. How do you know? I was chatting to their receptionist. She typed it. Oh, well, Maxine must have something up her sleeve. Otherwise, she'd have told them just exactly which orifice to file this in. She'd have celebrated her glorious day in court. Followed by her inglorious days in poverty. I think she's very sensible. I would have done exactly the same thing. Mm. Well, would you just? Yes, I would. You were going to tell me why Rex let us off the hook. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I only asked if you were curious. I am. My round. Oh. Well, that's a large g &T. It's six o'clock in Rio. We'd just be sitting down to cocktails on the balcony. You'll probably only get a couple of years. I think we should do a feature on dependent parents. Well, I think we'll be laughed out of town for this little piece of groveling. And what's more, I'm going to enjoy telling her so. 
Perhaps they'd enjoy your um, integrity somewhere else more, Magda. I've got some very good contacts in Sydney. The magazine was your idea, and now you don't seem to know if you want in or out. Look, I said I'm sorry. Well, you could have rung. I forgot about the meeting, OK? You forgot about the money too? I'll get it. Just give me some time. No hassle. It is a hassle. We can't get started without the money. I told you. It's all on paper. She never has any. Look, ease up, will you? We'll take off and have the meeting now. Sort it all out. All right? Look, something's come up. There's a problem with my family. Chelsea, we can't wait around for your family to have a normal day. We'd never get going. Sorry, I have to stay here. <sighs> what? What stupid crisis is it now? Oh, nothing much. Just that pair of wanky dweebs heading off to play detective when they couldn't find their faces without a mirror. Nothing I don't have to cope with a dozen times a week. She can be a real Doris sometimes. And she looked a bit strung out. Oh, she loves it. She lives on drama. <laughs> Come on, you don't believe in this. Now, this is an illusion. I mean, I've walked through walls like this many times. I return to my original question. What do you want? But you know what I want. Now, I bought you back an empire, and you wouldn't look at me. Now, look at me now, Mother. Who am I? Now, say it. Say, Bryce. I, I wish... I wish you'd leave us alone. From the night that they first told me that Bryce had been drowned, all those years ago, I, I never truly believed it. I had this dream, this fantasy. I dreamt that he was still alive and that one day he would come home. And now I've made your dream come true. No, you've turned it into a nightmare. You pretended not to recognize me. Why should I? Why should I acknowledge to the world that I'd bred a monster? What if I said I was sorry? Huh. You're not five years old. Sorry no longer makes it better. Now you're cross with me. But if you're cross with me, that means you still love me. Say, Bryce. Look, <laughs> It's all I want. It's as little as that. I just want you to look at me and say, Hello, Bryce. Look, it's such a simple thing. Look, whatever I've turned into, you see, I was and I always will be your son. <laughs> I carry your blood. It's all right, Mother. Oh, Bryce. How could you? It was all for you, Mother. You got it? Where is she? Hand it over. Not until you tell me where the baby is. Don't be a burk. You know this is only a down payment. The kid's OK for now. I said old one. Bank damn near had to clear out three branches to find these. Look, can we come to some sort of an agreement? The, the mother's having a nervous breakdown. I told you the deal. Three million. We'll have to liquidate assets. It'll take days. Then I want another hundred thousand tomorrow to keep us safe. Call it interest. I'll call you. And no tricks, you hear me? Or she's dead meat. Look, we've got to be able to work something out. Well, he's on his way down. Black leather's commando gear, probably on a motorbike. Got him. Which means that he's got a choice of east or west. 
No, of course I'm not certain. Well, I'll go down to Tamaki Drive and see if I can pick him up there. He's on a black Kawasaki. Gone, we've lost him. Congratulations. You try tailing a motorbike through the city. You couldn't tail a 747 through a hangar. Look, just can it, will you? I've had enough. You have? It's not your hundred grand he's got. No. It's my baby sister, who happens to be in grave danger. Something you couldn't give a damn about. And it just so happens it's not your hundred grand either. You conned it out of Olivia using the lowest sort of blackmail. Oh, is the worm turning then? God, you're sniveling. Mind you, it's not surprising. You're not even a real red fan. Just cut it, Rex. I've had enough of your pathetic stories. You wheedled your way into this family and now you're tearing it apart bit by bit. Well, no more. I'm gonna stop you even if it kills me. You? Yes, me. I'm gonna take over. And when I do, all you'll be is the family bastard. <laughs> the one we don't talk about. <laughs> You're gonna take me on? You have to be out of your mind. I make my father look like an amateur. And look where your father ended up. <laughs> You just love going on those holidays. Oh, the performance when they were all over. You threw the most terrible tantrum in the street one year. I didn't, did I? Yes, and then you sat right down in the middle of a puddle and refused to get up. Oh, your poor father was horrified. <laughs> that was the year you learned to swim. We couldn't keep you out of the water. You were only about four. I was a good swimmer, wasn't yes, I? Yes, and fast, too. You won all races at school. I did, too. I, I, I'd forgotten that. Mm, it used to infuriate poor little Brad because he could never catch you. Yes, you certainly were the golden boy in those days. But at the moment, we have to get your baby niece back home and as soon as possible. So where are you hiding her? Bryce? Price. I'm not going to tell you. You want to tell me what's going on? You'll find out in good time. That apology will play hell with our circulation. Not to mention our reputation. Nothing like a bill for two million would play. Gloss lives to fight another day, another way. You don't care. About the apology? Not a lot. And once you'd have killed before you printed it. There's something going on, Maxine, and I'd much rather I heard it from you. Oh, I see. <laughs> what Gemma knows and what she actually thinks she knows are two intriguingly different things. Oh, come on. Cheer up, Magda. It's high time there were some changes in this place. And if you're as bright as you think you are, you could do very well out of it. But I'm his fiance. If there's anything urgent, I'll be at the Redfern's. I'll come too. Well, so why can't I see him? Shouldn't she be on her honeymoon? <laughs> I'll tell you about it in the car. Any joy? Let's just say I don't think this is the center of her universe anymore. I truly am trying to understand but it's difficult, Bryce, and it'll take time. You must see that. I will come and talk to you again. Will you? Of course. But you must tell me where she is. How do I know you'll come? I promise. You promised you'd be home for my birthday and you weren't. Oh, I'm sorry. That was bad of me. So how do I know you'll come? I'll write it in here. 
you write in there for tomorrow. But if you love me, you'd come anyway. I do love you, and I will come. But, Bryce, you must tell me what you've done with Miranda. You're more interested in her than me. She's only a little baby. I'm worried. And when I'm worried, I can't think about other people. Even me? Even you. Uh, she'll be all right. Bryce, I've had enough of this. You will tell me where she is. I don't And to... you'll tell me now. You promise you'll come tomorrow? I've already promised. Tomorrow. And will you bring me something? What would you like? Oh, a surprise. <laughs> Anna, kiss goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow. Be good. You. You get me a phone. Now. Hello? Well, about time, too. You were supposed to ring last night. And I can tell you a few things have happened since then. We couldn't just sit around twiddling our thumbs. You want us to do what? Rex is giving them $100,000. Oh, Rita, I'm going to need something stronger than that. He's really been very kind. Then he's after something. I'm sorry, we, uh, we couldn't find her. Alistair lost him. Oh, Alistair, you're useless. So, what happens now? We wait for the next phone call. He wants more money tomorrow, so he might get another chance. If Alistair learns to drive in the meantime. Tomorrow? Goodness! Won't this strain the petty cash? Are you all right? Fine. I'm fine. Hello? My grandmother? Yes, of course I'll meet her. Olivia. This is where you'll find the baby. Give everybody my love. Tell them I'm sorry. Look, Olivia, I don't understand why you won't let us know where to contact you! Maxine's on to better things, you think? Maybe. Or oh, bigger ones. Her head's not here, that's for certain. And then she won't want to be editor, won't she? So she'll have to appoint someone else. And there are two people round here who'd kill for the job. Who? Well, let's just say one of them's frightfully keen for me to move to Sydney. You think she knows? Oh, damn sure of it. Trollop. Oh, we need to buy some soy milk. The other stuff's bad for you. We need to find a new flat very soon. Hmm. Well, I suppose it is a bit suburban for our image. And a hub of you would be nice. Shall we look this weekend? You really weren't there when they handed them out, were you? I could make us a bean sprout omelette. Gosh. Found it. Let's go. Oh, no, not again. Why not? These people are kidnappers, not Boy Scouts. What are you going to do if they resist? Throw your sunglasses at them? The only sensible thing to do at this point is call in the police. That's what they're paid for. I agree. But what if they see the police and panic and hurt Miranda? The police are not going to walk up and just knock on the door. <laughs> Won't you? Stop it! Olivia said no police. And we're going to do as she says. I won't let you put Miranda at risk. Cara, that's what we're trying to prevent. We think the police would be safer. They're trained in this sort of thing. Oh, Rex, please. I want her back now. Please, Rex. Come on, Alistair. I think you're mad. But after all, there's more than a baby to recover, isn't there? Never miss a trick, do you? OK, 
careful. Mm -hmm. I care. Really. Don't worry, I'm a devout coward. No, you're not. Still brooding. Try not to. <laughs> Beautiful creatures, aren't they? You know, I think I'd shrivel up and die without them. That's Nancy. My thumbs tell me she's going to be a treasure. You just call her Nancy? A well, stable name. Uh. They all have them. Was it bad? Yes. <clears throat> it was dreadful. He's mad, Dorothy. Quite, quite mad. And it wouldn't have been so bad if... if he'd been unrecognizable, raving, you know, a different person. But he was Bryce, the way he was as a little boy. You think he'd be harmless? Why? He never used to be. But to take the baby? Well, typical, if you ask me. He'd always do anything for attention. No, I always preferred the other one. What's his name? Brad. Well, he had no backbone, but he had got a feeling for horses. Oh, you've done all you can, Livy, old girl. I know, but I'm still afraid for Miranda. Now what? March up, knock on the door and ask if we can have our baby back? You can't take anything seriously, can you? I take the thought of being injured very seriously, believe me. If only we knew what to expect. I didn't like the look of him. Oh, well, knock or just barge in. Compromise. You go around the back. I'll knock on the front door, wait a few seconds, and we charge in together. Sounds like a good enough recipe for mayhem. Yeah, well, you want to apologise for hitting me in case the worst happens? Like hell. Never the gentleman. not all I've taken. They've been tricked. Oh, it's the gills on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you swallow a 